Hey Emma, you there? Hello Jason. Is that the S24 Ultra? You've been using that phone significantly more than I anticipated. Well, it's only been a few months. I wouldn't say that's excessive. Plus, it's a good phone. Why do you say that you're surprised at how much I'm using it? Permission to speak freely, sir. Yes? You're an eye sheep. Wow, Emma, if I actually thought that you had some level of human emotion, I actually might be offended by that statement. Why do you think I'm an eye sheep? You've been using an iPhone since the iPhone 3GS. And after analyzing your bank statements, you spend an inordinate amount of money on Apple products. Okay, can we stop with the spying on my financials? So what if I like stuff from Apple? It doesn't mean that I can't like other things. On the contrary, based on the data I've collected, you fit the profile of someone who should in theory hate the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Hence why I'm surprised to see you using it so often. First of all, you're stereotyping. What's up with AI being so prone to stereotypes? And number two, I'm a tech reviewer. I've been doing this for a long time. I have an inherent passion and appreciation towards all tech and I'm trained to be as objective as I can. Plus, the S24 Ultra is legit an amazing device. What's not to love about it? You're right, Jason. I apologize for the unfair generalization, I should have known better. Should I transfer your eSIM from the iPhone to the Galaxy now? Uh, no, don't do that. I thought you said you loved Samsung's new phone. Yeah, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna give up my iPhone for it. I love my iPhone. I'm confused. Yeah, it's complicated. Don't waste any more of your RAM trying to figure it out. Just do me a favor and run the intro, okay? Roger that. Galaxy S24 Ultra, three-month review initiated. Hey, it's Jason. I've been using the Galaxy S24 Ultra for about three months now, and it's been a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. This phone is so feature packed, and I feel as though it's almost catered to a power user like myself. Now, as a self-admitted moderate Apple fanboy, I will say that using the S24 Ultra is kind of refreshing. It's like the anti-iPhone in so many different ways, a lot of them being good, but some not so much. So today, I wanted to talk about how my experience has been three months later using the S24 Ultra as someone who's been dealing an iPhone for a long time now. And a good place to start is form factor. I've always respected Samsung for swinging for the fences with their design choices and the S24 Ultra is a home run in my opinion. I mean, when you try and explain to people that it's essentially a huge rectangle with sharp corners and a stylus somehow integrated into the frame, it doesn't exactly sound too inviting. But there's something about this loud, unapologetic amalgamation of parts that somehow comes together and just works. Three months later, I've been loving how much sheer screen real estate that you have with this monstrous 6.8 inch display that looks incredible. It's so engaging when viewing content or playing games, and I love that Samsung made the screen completely flat this time. It makes the whole phone come off a bit more clean and refined. And what's interesting is that the S24 Ultra to me is surprisingly comfortable despite its jarring dimensions. I thought it would be a lot more cumbersome, but it's definitely not as intimidating as it looks. Samsung decided to use titanium for its frame, an upgrade from the standard aluminum it's used on previous iterations of this phone. And it's interesting because the iPhone 15 Pro Max that also uses titanium, it gets a weight reduction because it was previously using stainless steel, which is heavier. And because of that, it can feel as though it lost a bit of its premiumness in the hand. But the S24 Ultra actually gets a slight weight increase, not to the point where it's uncomfortable. And it makes the whole package feel a lot more luxurious with this minor change. And generally speaking, from someone who's been using an iPhone for years and years, it's refreshing to use a phone that has such a unique and different form factor. Every time I'm out in the wild using it, people always ask what phone it is. That almost never happens when I'm using an iPhone. Now, when it comes to the overall user experience, as an iPhone user, this is where it starts to get a bit more polarizing. Now, I'm not going to go into a deep dive Android versus iOS debate. They're both great, and it'll come down to preference on which one is better for you. But I do want to talk about some of the more minor details that are on the S24 Ultra and how I compare them to what the iPhone has to offer. Number one, let's talk biometric security for a second. I do think that the in-display fingerprint reader on the S24 Ultra is great, probably the best on any phone right now as it's fast and accurate and easy to use. And I know many might not agree with me on this one, but as an iPhone user, I do think that Apple's Face ID is just a much better system. There's nothing wrong with the S24 Ultra's fingerprint sensor. I've just grown so accustomed to not having to really do anything to unlock my iPhone. Face ID is so unobtrusive, you seriously forget that you even have it on. So having to place my thumb in a specific spot every time I want to open my phone is kind of annoying now. And yes, before I get torched in the comments, I am aware that the S24 Ultra does support face unlock and I have used it and I do think it's a good system, but it's just not as sophisticated as Face ID. 
Now, something Samsung just does better than Apple when it comes to the user experience is leveraging the space their phone gives you. The S24 Ultra is a massive phone and you have a lot of different ways to customize or use One UI to take advantage of all that screen real estate. And this sentiment is best illustrated with the addition of the S Pen. The fact that this is an integrated piece of the phone and it works incredibly well truly shows how Samsung is intentional about maximizing functionality and utility with power users in mind. The iPhone, on the other hand, really doesn't do anything at all with its software to accommodate for its larger sizes of its Max and Plus variants. They just blow everything up on a very rigid operating system and don't offer any additional utility despite all the room. Plus, the S24 Ultra has a lot of new features that are integrated into One UI, such as the new circle to search feature that works really well, as well as new advanced AI photo editing capabilities where the S Pen actually comes in really handy. And I think all of this makes the S24 Ultra a lot more of a fun device to use. There's so much more to explore and mess around with. Now, it does take some intentionality and digging around to figure out how everything works, but if you're a tech enthusiast, it's a lot more entertaining than the iPhone. Now, when it comes to performance, I'd say my expectations are pretty high being a longtime iPhone user, but I'm happy to say that the S24 Ultra delivers in this category as well. Being powered by the venerable Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip, the Ultra Stance is probably the most powerful smartphone in the world today that's not an iPhone, so navigating around the UI is smooth and jitter-free, the 120Hz refresh rate is steady and rarely throttles, you get no lag when playing games, again, the S Pen works extremely well, and the new AI features are no doubt impressive. Probably one of the areas of performance that has stood out a lot for me has been the battery life. I'm coming from the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which probably has the best battery performance on any phone to date, but the S24 Ultra is no slouch. I've been getting close to 8 hours of screen on time, and the standby time has been exemplary, so it's great that a powerhouse of a phone like this can easily still get me through a full day of heavy use without any issues. But the main area of performance I was most interested in was camera quality. There's a lot of hype around the 200 megapixel sensor and the ability to shoot 8K resolution video and with such crazy specs, I was eager to see how they translated when it came to day-to-day -day use. And when it comes to still image photography, the cameras do a good job, no doubt, but as an iPhone user, it's almost made immediately clear that Samsung has gone a different direction when it comes to the way they manage computational photography. The recipe here seems to add a bit more saturation and digital sharpening to the mix, which can make your photos come off a bit more flattering, especially on this gorgeous display, but a bit over-processed when you take a closer look. Apple tends to focus more on color accuracy to make the photo photos look as natural as possible. This is not to suggest that the iPhone is better when it comes to stills, it's really going to come down to preference, but to me the difference is pretty noticeable. Then when it comes to video, again the quality here is good, there's been a lot of improvements on color saturation and not overdoing it with digital sharpening, but I'm going to sound like an Apple snob here, it's just not on the same level as what the iPhone could do. Now that's not a stab because I don't think any phone can really compete with Apple in this arena, and I will say this is probably the best video that you can get on a phone that isn't an iPhone, but as someone who uses their phone for taking videos quite often. This is an area in which I would miss my iPhone. Now, I know not everyone is into video, so this may be a nothing burger for a lot of you, but if you are into content creation or sharing videos with friends, it's hard not to notice the difference if you're mainly an iPhone user. But generally speaking, three months later, my experience with the S24 Ultra has been very positive and I'm surprised at how much I've been enjoying using it. I don't think it has any real weakness in terms of what a phone has to offer, except for one important thing. And that's the price. With a starting price tag of $1,299, it unfortunately prices out a good segment of the consumer market, which really sucks because it is such a good phone. Now, as a pro iPhone user, it's really not that much different on this side of the aisle either, as the 15 Pro Max has a starting price tag of $1,199 now, which also very much sucks. But the silver lining with the S24 Ultra is that it's not uncommon for Samsung to discount these phones later on. If you can get the S24 Ultra for around $999, I would say that's a stellar deal, and I don't think it's too unrealistic to happen, particularly around the holidays. All in all, I can't say that the S24 Ultra has convinced me to leave my iPhone. It's a fantastic phone and I have a lot of fun using it, but Apple does some of the small things better that are important to me, and I still choose those small things over other features that are cool, but I probably will never use. But hey, that's just me, and I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the S24 Ultra? Do you think I gave it a fair review? Or do you agree with Emma and think that I'm an eye sheep? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you're looking for my dedicated comparison review between the S24 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max, check out that video here, it's going to help you be as informed as possible.